DaVinci Resolve 20 beta is in full effect, and we've already gotten beta 2, because Blackmagic moves fast. And while there are some huge features, ones that are coming soon, like the AI generative set expand feature, and a whole laundry list of other features that have already been included in the initial betas, I wanted to make a video about my top five favorite features that I realize I'm using almost every day, or ones that I've just now found in testing out, and that I see myself using more on a daily basis. So the first feature I want to talk about is a beat visualizer. A lot of times we can be editing things to beats. Maybe that's through a montage or through um, just there's a whole bunch of storytelling reasons why you would want to edit something on a beat. So I'm going to take one of these random songs. They don't necessarily align here. Let's say this isn't a montage, but let's say these series of clips right here was a montage that I wanted to edit to the beat. Now, if I go in here, I can't easily see the beats, right? Some songs have like this sort of thing where we zoom in and I can very easily tell like, oh, there's a beat, there's a beat, there's a beat. And that makes editing really, really easy. But stuff like this, it can be a lot harder to tell. What we're gonna do is right click on the clip and the very first option, well, I, the last option actually, just closest to my mouse, is show music beats. That's gonna bring up this dialog box for AI to detect musical beats. We'll let it do its thing and boom, we can see right away what the rhythm is looking like on this track. We can also see how it changes for various different parts of the song. Let's see if this feels accurate when we listen to it. And so now we get that hi-hat, right? We see it. The second feature, admittedly, this will be the first time that I try it out. This is the only feature that I haven't tried out before because I wanted to see how easy it was and give my honest feedback. But I think it will become very useful because I've opened a new project here. Uh, this is my new iPhone filmmaking guide. I've had one for the past, what, year or two? Over a thousand of you have joined. Thank you so much. Um, and so many of you have gotten great value out of it. So I decided to remake it, update it. It's been a while since all things iPhone filmmaking have been out. So I'm really excited. I've got the new uh, intro here and I've shot most of it. Um, you can see here I have a bunch of multicam type setups going. Anyone who does multicam stuff, you're about to be really mad at me. Normally what I do is I literally go through, trim everything up and then literally just manually cut between um, A and B cam. I know, I know, I've been a Resolve editor for so many years and I've never really done multicam. So let's see if my mind can be changed today. So we're gonna take this first video here, which is decently long. Let me find these two clips and audio goes into the first one. Create new multicam clip using selected clips. Uh, I did not do time code, so we're gonna do sound. I even do sound on the second camera. I may have messed this up. All right, here's our multicam. So syncing up, easy, I figured that much. Now let's go ahead and bring it down into here. All right, so now we're gonna go into our source and we're gonna change to multicam. And then we have this new button right here called AI Multicam Smart Switch. So this should cut everything up for me, automatically detect wide angle. Both of these are kind of mid, so I'm going to deselect that and say angle one is our wide angle. Frequency, medium, sure, use wide angle for intro and outro, no. We'll get rid of silence ourselves, and we want better. Use audio only fast analysis. So apparently what this does is, obviously we've seen programs and plugins do this, where it can detect who is talking. So if you're doing a podcast, it will, look, of course, look at the audio and judge that based on like if angle one has a microphone and that one's now talking and angle two is silent, then it knows how to cut it. But let's say your audio track is just one big track and you have multiple people talking. If you uh, keep this deselected and go for better results, it will also analyze the video and see if anyone's mouths are moving and help that line that up with the uh, audio to give you a better track. There's only one of me and I only really need to go off audio. So I think that should help us. Let's hit analyze. Let's see how fast it does it. Oh, it's 
Doing it faster than I thought it would. All right, so obviously I see a ton of different cuts here. Let's kind of see what this is actually looking like. And obviously this doesn't go through and cut the dead space. Now for now, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, you can go through, do the remove silence feature. I may try that in a little bit. Um, but I just want to see how this thing did. So right now it's only cutting to the wide when there is silence. All right, so I don't think I did the use case very right. What I should do is go through and chop this up into the final bits. And then it's not going to have so much silence to play to because I selected that box that cut to camera angle two for silence. Um, I guess I'll try it one more time and I'm going to deselect that. Wide angle, angle one, uh, medium, and we'll do analyze again. All right, so I think I understand what's happening here. I think it's getting tripped up because the only clean audio is coming from angle one, this main angle here. So angle two technically has the better uh, audio to it. And so I need to figure out how to put angle one, but the, this is a totally different video. I've recorded like 20 minutes now of this feature um, and I'm going too in depth into something that is this complete user error at the moment. Like I said, this is my first time doing multicam stuff in terms of the smart cutting feature uh, that looks very promising. It's very quick and I think it's only going to get better. And I think if I set these clips up properly and then all I have to do is go into the smart switch but I have them properly cut and audio is proper and all that good stuff. Uh, I think it's going to work amazing. So I'll keep you guys updated with that. Um, this month, by the end of this month, I want this new course to be live. So you guys can uh, purchase it now if you want, if you're interested. Um, and then all the existing iPhone filmmaking guide clips in there will just get replaced with this new stuff. So there's already a lot of great value in there. Um, and it's pretty cheaply priced. I always try to price my courses cheaply. Um, so you can hop in there if you want. But but I'm also very excited about the new content uh, being added here finally in the uh, next couple of weeks. So before I leave this project, I want to talk about today's sponsor, and that is Motion VFX. Now, I've been talking about them and using them for literally years. If I go under my effects panel, my titles, uh, and I go under Motion VFX here, you can see how many different plugin packs I have. And here's the thing, here's what makes them different. Not only do they have an amazing library of plugins, overlays, titles, what makes them stand out is the reliability and the ease of using this company. As soon as you go in and you purchase any of these different plugins, you have what is called the M installer. You can see all your different plugins. And here is actually a good example. So one of my plugins, M tracker has an update instead of having to go to the website download a new package find the back end folder that plugins are supposed to be installed in i just go in here and i just hit update and here we can see that update m tracker 3d besides the fact that all of their plugins look incredibly professional and i'm so excited to be using them on my new guides you can see this I love that little glitch asset right here. And if we go under the titles, you can see how customizable it truly is. You set your ins, your outs, the sizing of everything, your fonts, colors. If it has like lines or shapes, you're gonna be able to adjust those to your liking to really make it not feel just like a template, but it's like something you're actually adding branding to your video. And while it's impossible for me to answer the question, which is your favorite pack? I love the fact that when you go to each different pack, scroll down about two thirds of the way down and you'll see each individual asset that comes with it. Hover over with your mouse or tap on it if you're on your phone and you can literally see all the different assets. And wait, there's one more thing. Yeah, M Installer is also on the iPad. So if you have the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve, which I know a lot of you do, uh, you can actually install most of your M Installer plugins and presets right inside the iPad version as well. So definitely give Motion VFX a try if you haven't already. You will not regret it. Actually, you will become completely addicted to all their packs. So learn more, check them out for yourself. Look in the description down below. Shout out to Motion VFX for sponsoring and continuing to support this channel. All right, let's go back to the other project and show you my favorite feature that everyone's probably gonna laugh at me for, but it is so useful. And I literally like almost shouted when they announced it. So this project isn't too bad here, but 
I'm sure a lot of you have been like me and you stack so many text things on top of each other, right? You want multiple text things on screen and the amount of projects that I have where I have to like move all this down and I just have like 10 video layers of text right here, it's ridiculous. And then you go to like move everything, you have to make sure you select it all and all this different stuff, it's annoying. So I'm so happy that they added uh, this new feature, if we go under titles right here next to my motion VFX stuff, uh, but no, right at the top, right above the text that we normally bring in, we have new multi text. So if I bring one of these in here, you have one video at, or asset layer essentially. And inside of here, we can have multiple text files and they all can be different, place different places. So if I want like a lower third, I can put, you know, my name down here and I can go into my layout and I have all of my different controls right here. But then if I want to add another layer, I just go back here, go to text, a lighter font, definitely smaller, move this down. And I don't know, let's do another text up here. We can do gonna annoy a lot of the designers with this one drop shadow. And you can do angle text text boxes, you can do so many things within this one simple text tool. And it's just great because it's just that one text layer. And let's say you're doing like a chapter thing, right? And each one's gonna be a little different. You have subtitles, all this stuff, you can just copy this over. And now I have something over here and I can just turn off certain layers. So if I don't need those two layers, I just want to see chapter two or vice versa. If I don't, if I just want the lower third, I can turn those off. Like it's so easy to go in and it's just so nice being able to have one layer for that. So I love this new multi-text feature and I'm using it in nearly every single video. So as someone who audio is not something I'm a super expert on and it's not one of my passions, I wanna quickly balance music, dialogue, sound effects, all that different stuff. And so now you can easily do that in just a couple clicks. If we go up to timeline, and then we go to AI tools, we will see a new audio assistant. All it's going to ask me is what is your delivery method? We have a whole list of stuff in here, but of course, I'm just going straight to YouTube. So now we just hit audio mix. And you can see that it's actually going through and analyzing all the different sound tracks of my uh, project here. It's classifying what each thing is based on uh, AI recognition. I don't even have to label like I didn't label all the different tracks probably should have. Um, but it's going to be able to tell a difference between music and dialogue, sound effects and ambience, all that different stuff. Oh my gosh, it labeled them for me. Dialogue one, dialogue two, music one, music two, sound effects. This really is an assistant. Not until last Wednesday. So it's pretty solid balance. You know, I look at this and I understand the context of the edit. AI is going to have a really hard time doing that, right? Like I have commercial video in here. I have commercial audio playing. I have some dialogue in VO, but then I have this music backtrack. Like it doesn't necessarily know what I'm going for. And there's no prompt for me to type in like, Hey, lower this and this maybe at some point in the future, that'd be a cool, like AI chat GPT integration, of, like being able to type out a prompt of like, Hey, I want the music to be really mellow while the dialogue is prominent, so on and so forth. Until then, it's kind of just a couple clicks and then you have an audio mix. So I think it's either going to be a complete hit or miss. All right. And finally, this one also is relatively new to me, but this is going to be very useful as I'm bringing on a uh, editor for the first time. And this is the new cloud folder feature. So we've been using Blackmagic Cloud for a couple of years now, and it's amazing for projects. Um, but of course, you're only syncing the assets within each project. And there's a lot of assets that you reuse constantly, whether that's music, whether that's like intro overlays or like video clips that you're always using, maybe B-roll folders you're always grabbing from. And so you, here you can go in and see like Michael B-roll clips. And I can add this as a cloud folder. Maybe I'm just grabbing one of these Italy clips or something. Sure, let's just say that. So let's say our clip was fully uploaded here and let's say we had a bunch of different clips, images, video clips, whatever assets we want in there. You're gonna go back to your project and you're gonna go into your uh, media pool on your edit page and you're gonna see this cloud download button right here. If we click that, 
we can see our Blackmagic Cloud folder. You go in here and you'd see all your different cloud folders. Obviously, I just made this one. So I'll hit add and then you're going to pick a folder location of where you're going to save the assets from this because everything needs some sort of local um, access because, you know, editing off the cloud, we ain't there yet. Uh, so you want to sync proxies only or sync originals. Proxies is fine if I'm like my own remote editor. Uh, so I'll hit download. And now we can see this Michael B-roll clips right here just because I was on the assets. We obviously can move this wherever we want. Um, and so now if I were to have my assets fully in here, they would be in here. Uh, they would start syncing. We can see it's at least accessing it. Uh, they're up to date because there's no clips fully synced just yet. We would see all those assets in there and I could pull those into the relevant project. This is a great addition to Blackmagic Cloud. We've been using syncing projects and assets for years, but now having a custom folder that we can individually grab in in multiple projects and always kind of resort back to and having multiple of those folders i think is huge and i think it's going to make people buy a lot more black magic cloud storage the more people use it the more i hope uh the pricing for that cloud storage goes down we will see but regardless these are my five things that i love about davinci resolve 20. i can't wait to see these features get enhanced throughout the beta period if I missed any, if you guys have some new daily features you use all the time, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about some other features I may have missed, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.